Hi everybody, today I'm going to be talking through possible items for your spring capsule wardrobe. This is just a little bit of inspiration. Um, as you can see, I am not really a capsule wardrobe kind of person. I have a lot of quite flamboyant outfits and um, I enjoy having that sort of style going on in my wardrobe personally. I know that a lot of people despise shopping or simply just want a little bit of inspiration um, for what kind of items they could put in their own capsule wardrobe. And so I have just gone through all of the items that I own and put them together in a kind of little montage so that you can see how items can interact with one another, how they can be used in multiple scenarios um, so that you could potentially add them to your wardrobe. The difference with what I am suggesting as your capsule wardrobe versus a lot of what I've seen online at the moment is that everyone seems to be a little timid with the use of colour and pattern. It's very much have this pair of jeans, this white shirt, have a, a beige trench coat and a and a, there's a place for all of this in, in your wardrobe, right? If it's if it's what you like. That's not really my style at all, and I think that we are way too shy about using colour in our wardrobes. For me, I a lot of the time I'm trying to plan outfits for the office, and so I've gone with a lot of things that would be kind of work appropriate. Um, but I have been told in a professional environment that wearing something bright and eye-catching, not something not appropriate for work, but if you turn up in something that's brightly coloured, that kind of elevates people's mood, it also immediately gives an impression. And first impressions are so important, particularly in a professional environment. I have had feedback on my style in the workplace, which sounds kind of strange, but it's always been positive. It's never been kind of, oh God, could you turn it down? <laughs> so I think being bright purple in a room full of people wearing black can sometimes serve you well. So without further ado, I will show you a little bit closer up what I've chosen for my rail, for my capsule wardrobe for spring. Um, which should hopefully help you to inject a little bit of vibrancy, a little bit of colour into your style inspiration for this season. So I've curated a number of items here, which I think that they could form the basis of a really good capsule wardrobe. And this is just a kind of style guideline. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to choose the exact colours, the exact patterns, even the exact items that I've chosen. For example, I tend to shy away from shorter skirts so there's nothing that really has a short skirt i have one kind of tunic here but there's nothing that really has a short skirt on it so if that's your vibe then feel free to kind of go down a different avenue to what i have chosen um i also i'm really more of a kind of chinos person i don't wear a lot of jeans i've included one pair of jeans right at the end um so kind of take inspiration but you can go whichever way you want with this um so my main guidelines are to choose and this may be kind of backwards in terms of how most people think that you should approach a capsule wardrobe choose one or two bright colors that you feel that you're comfortable in that you could wear a lot of and that you enjoy that make you happy um, so for me, this purple really is the star of the show. As you can see, I have a lot of things in this purple. You can see tonally, these two have a relationship too. So they're, they're kind of a lighter version of the same purple. So there's a lot of colours going on here and I'll talk about uh, why I've chosen these items. So my capsule wardrobe really centres around this dress, which is from Under the Stories. I got it this season, so it is still available if you also are bewitched by the print. So you can see it's this gorgeous kind of satsuma orange, but it has this purple and it has actually both shades of the purple, dark and the light. So I chose it mainly because of the purple, ironically, which is funny given that it's mainly bright orange, um, because I know that this color makes me happy, that I wear a lot of it, that I will have accessories and potentially other garments that will go with it that it will fit quite snugly into my wardrobe because it's a colour and a pattern that I wear a lot of and I'm happy with 
Um, it's also a style that I'm happy with and I'll show you that when I try all of these outfits on in a moment. Um, I am not really a short, short dress kind of person, which you'll find out about me. Um, I do not like to show my legs off because they are quite short. <laughs> so my other thing is to try and, if you can, choose a couple of patterned items that have the same colour family within them. So you've got also this, and I think it helps that both of these dresses are under the stories. Often brands will use the same shade of a colour, potentially because they've got the fabric already and they're just reusing it, or because I assume it's a marketing ploy. If all of their clothes match, then you're more likely to go back and buy another item from the same place because it will go with the item that you already own. They certainly have worked their magic on me um, because I'm a sucker. So I have an awful lot of things on this rail from Under the Stories just because they use the right kind of purple for my wardrobe. Um, so this is another one. You can see that it also has flecks of this Satsuma orange. So once you have one dress with this kind of color relationship in it, another one will fit so, so quickly into your wardrobe because you'll know how to style it you'll know what kind of shoes and bags work with it. It just makes life so much easier when you, you know, you're know you using the same colors over and over again. It's why I have so much of this purple in my wardrobe. That's the dresses. Once you have these dresses, that's kind of the foundation of your capsule wardrobe and you build out from there. Seems kind of strange to choose your craziest and most patterned item as your pillar, but it actually works out quite well for me because it means that I've got this foundation, this colour palette that I'm already working with. You've got your pattern and from there you can choose your neutrals and you can choose your brights. So I obviously have chosen this purple colour from the dress. So here we have an oversized jumper. This is quite casual but I would still probably wear it to the office if it was maybe a Friday or if it was really cold. Um, it works as a dress or as a kind of oversized top and I wear it as both. So there's that. There is purple trousers here. And I will talk you through why I like these. I think, again, I watch a lot of videos where people are recommending you buy like a plain pair of chinos, like beige, black, gray, or, and all of these things and you sort of think yeah sure if you if you don't want your outfit to stand out or look creative I totally see that but you're probably on the wrong video <laughs> as you can see from my wardrobe that's not my vibe at all really I think in injecting a little bit of creativity of vibrance into your day it actually really can impact your mood and the mood of people around you too so that's why my work trousers are bright purple there is also a, a purple jumper short one really easy, staple, and I'll show you how I wear this as well. We then get into more patterns, but once you have, you know, your kind of staple colour, you know that you're going to have items that will go with something that has that colour in the pattern. So again, Amber the Stories, they use this same purple so that you will buy their trousers and their pattern shirts, but it can be good if you have a brand that you really love and you know that if you buy things from there, A, they'll be good quality, but B, they'll all match. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. A pair of jeans, this is actually quite normal for me. Not really much to say about that. So here I've really started to play with tones. Um, so it is, again, it does have a relationship to the orange of the dress. It's much more subtle, much more pastel, but that orange exists in this dress here. So again, it's kind of still got that relationship to your other garments. Um, and we know that this purple and this orange go together. So we know that this purple and this orange go together too, um, at least in some form, and you'll know how to accessorize it. So I then have a couple of shirts. One is white and you'll have to excuse because I went out and covered in wine. <laughs> I have three white shirts, two are in the wash, and the one that's covered in wine is not. I have washed it like three times. It's clean, I promise. It's just 
you know, red wine. It doesn't come out. Um, so I shall turn it this way. But two white shirts. This is a very simple, basic Zara white shirt. This is also Zara, but it's um, it has much more detail. So you can see the buttons here are these kind of beautiful pearl buttons. Excuse my nails, I've just had acrylics taken off. I feel like I've lost my powers. Anyway, so it has a necktie, so you can turn it into a kind of pussy bow blouse with that. And also it has this kind of detail at the front. I can't remember what you call that. Um, and the pearl buttons. So it's just a slightly more sophisticated blouse to wear kind of under things or just on its own. It works with a lot of different outfits. Um, so that's those two. I then also have a turtleneck. Um, I do have a lot of different colour turtlenecks. It just seems to be a neckline that works on me. I think it works on a lot of people. I know that they, they seem to have had a real vogue in the last couple of years uh, of people wearing them under stuff or like, you know, like under dungarees, under shirts and just having this kind of little pop of colour. They can also be a really good way of making an outfit suit you if it's not exactly the right colour for you. You can just pop a turtleneck underneath so that the colour that's near to your face is a colour that suits you even if the rest of the outfit doesn't. So yes, turtlenecks. I was going somewhere with that. Oh yes, the only time that turtlenecks might be a little bit tricky it, on a body type is if you are kind of larger chested because then it can really kind of accentuate that area which may not be, I mean, maybe it is what you want, maybe it's not. Um, so if it isn't, then I would maybe avoid these and go for more of a kind of V neckline, something that doesn't kind of just stretch right over the front because um, that may not be what you want. Final item I have, and you'll have to excuse the creases because it's linen and I'm lazy, um, is this tunic. Very, very basic, but it kind of goes over or under stuff. It could be a little cream skirt. It could be a tunic over a blouse. Um, it goes with a lot of things. And again, all of these items on this side of my rail are neutrals. So, and they're neutrals that go with all of the patterned items. I've also gone for accessories in these neutrals. So for me, I don't tend to buy accessories in my brights. I tend to buy accessories in my neutral colours just because I know that even if I'm wearing an outfit that is mainly a bright colour I can just stick a cream bag on with it and it won't look really weird whereas if I'm wearing an outfit that I've kind of put together and my only option is a bright purple bag it may not be exactly right so I stick with my chosen neutrals I have this kind of it's ecru really more than cream a kind of off-white um, and this bag is coach it is my prized possession um so you can see here that all of my um shoes are in this cream as well so for my capsule wardrobe i tend to say one pair of boots in a neutral and we're in spring so one pair of sandals that you can carry through to summer in a neutral one pair of kind of relaxed shoes in a neutral. What I've then done is a pair of dressed up shoes in a bright because you know that the colours of the things that you might be wearing with high heels are, have this purple colour in them, they've got the brights in them. So I could use orange, I could use purple. I've chosen purple because I know that I could even then wear it with my trousers. Um, Again, I will go through the outfits with this later. Finally, and I know I haven't talked about black items, but there is black in this pattern here. There is black in this. And even if I were just to wear an all purple outfit, put a black belt and some black boots on, and suddenly that becomes part of your color palette as well. These are also just the most sturdy, kind of reliable shoes. I got them, so I believe that they are June, but I got them for £13 on eBay, new with tags. Sometimes the internet amazes me. 
there we are. And without further ado, I will try on some of these outfits for you and show you how all of these garments kind of interact with one another and how you can style them up. So I am wearing my first outfit. This is the centerpiece of my capsule wardrobe. And as you can see, it is very, very bright and patterned. Um, but it's also office appropriate. It's kind of sophisticated looking just because it's a longer cut. It has a long sleeve and it also has a collar. I've done up all the way to the top. I wouldn't do that on many items, but I think when there's so much going on, I don't want to kind of interrupt the pattern by having it open here. I like to be able to see the full pattern. Um, I have done it, as you can see here, with the white boots from my capsule wardrobe collection. I would also probably use this white bag as well, because if I come closer, you can see that in this pattern, there is this kind of cream color. No matter how bright in pattern they are, if you can pick a common neutral, then that's really helpful. It's a really good shape for me. Um, if you're like me and you're kind of hourglassy, then a dress like this is really good because the sleeve, I'm quite broad at the top, and so the, I don't want the sleeve to accentuate my shoulder. I want it to accentuate lower down. Um, it's also nipped in at the waist, which suits me. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a big fan of getting my legs out. So from that perspective, it's a really good length. Anything midi or maxi works for me. So I'm going to do something else with this, which is I'm going to pull this jumper. So it's a nice purple. You can see that it has the same on the sleeve there, or at least very similar, as in if you're looking at it from a distance or like from, if you're looking at me, you wouldn't notice any difference in the purple. This tone is exactly the same, just lighter. So let me put this on and show you. So this is if you want to kind of make it more casual. There we go. So. I'm aware that there is some kind of like belt trick you can do where you have it kind of tucked like that so that you see kind of at the back it comes down but at the front it looks like it's tucked into a skirt. I, If I had a belt on me at the moment I would do that but unfortunately I'm moving house and I have lost track of my belts. So imagination time. Pretend that I have a belt here and that it all looks very tucked in and sophisticated. And just by throwing a jumper over it, it stops it suddenly being a kind of almost cocktail dress and just makes it into kind of a fun skirt that you have on with one of your kind of casual comfy jumpers. So another trick that I like to do is just to kind of show off a little bit of the cuffs because I feel like when I'm looking at an outfit like this, it looks very broken up if I can't see a bit of the pattern in in this sleeve or in some element at the top of it. The only thing I don't like about this jumper is that it you can't pull a collar through it because it's too high. But if I could, then I would absolutely show that collar as well so that you feel that kind of flow through the outfit. You've got this pattern on the sleeve. It immediately kind of draws the eye. It almost looks like the jumper has been deliberately matched to the skirt, even though of course this is just the sleeve from the dress coming through underneath. But if no one's ever seen you in this outfit, they don't know it's not a skirt, so. Okay, I have had to stop the process of what I was doing because I found a new way to wear this dress and I got really excited, so I'm gonna show you that as well. And it is part of my capsule wardrobe. So I was in the middle of putting my trousers on and I still had my dress on over the top and I thought, wait a minute, you can almost get away with this as a jacket. It has kind of got these bits here, but they kind of just look like frills. I'm loving it. I think I potentially look a little bit like somebody's very eccentric auntie. Either that or I look cool and I just can't decide. Mm. I don't know. I guess you can be, be the judge of that. There's a really weird man outside my window. Go away. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's, oh, he's really looking at me now. So 
the mad anti coat is another option for a button down dress and this to be fair is a good reason to buy a button down dress because they do tend to be slightly multi-purpose even if you're a little bit put off by the really bright colors um you could have a black and white version of this which would look very suave i think with the kind of chinos and and top so there's another option. Oh God, my brain keeps running away at a million miles an hour today. But I'm back to my original plan, which is to just talk about the um, the basics with the purple. So as you can see here, I've got my cream, uh, I think it's French Connection actually, um, turtleneck with my purple chinos. Um, I think this is this is a good, very kind of versatile look. You could definitely get away with it in the office. But you could also be going down the shops, you could be just kind of doing anything. It's a very kind of in between the outfit where if you had to be smart, you look smart enough. You know, if your friend suddenly went, we're going to a fancy restaurant, you'd be sort of, okay, yeah, that's fine. You know, if you had your bag and your heel boots on, very much able to go to a fancy restaurant in this outfit. But also if your friend was like, do you want to come around and like eat pizza, you could chuck some trainers on with it and and do that. I'm not gonna show you all of the tops with this because I feel like that's really boring for you to watch, um, but you can also do shirt and chinos, which is something I do for the office a lot. Again, just having these like colorful chinos makes the outfit so much more exciting. I have the Zara blouse, which is a similar vibe, but it just makes it a little bit more preppy. It's also a slightly different white, but I think both of them I can get away with. Some people, seem to buy into either wearing off-white or white, and if that's your jam, then do that, but I wear both. Um, okay, so my next thing is the jumper that is a tone of the dress, and we know because, because we have this dress and it looks nice and the colors work, we know that these colors will work together, and therefore, you can have a little play. This is white and this is kind of apricot. So with this apricot comes this jumper. Again, it's under the stories, but I think I bought it on eBay for like five quid. So um, let me show you what it looks like with this on. Because again, then you're kind of shaking it up. You're not just wearing neutrals, you can wear colors together and you can be pretty confident that they go together because you've seen them in the pattern and they work together in the pattern. Oh, I'm trying not to get lipstick on it. So with jumpers like this, I tend to do a tuck only on one side. I don't know. It just means that you look like you actually have a waist because if I wear it just like this, it is so so unflattering it makes it look like i have no waist at all and then i just have these like weird legs that like sprout out at the sides it's so much better to just and it's the easiest thing ever i don't know why i haven't been doing this for my entire life but it's so much easier to just tuck it in gives you a little bit of waist at the side but if you do a full tuck, it can make you look a little bit like one of those nerdy kids in an American film from like the 1980s, where it's like, I'm a nerd because my jumper is tucked in. So don't do that. This is where it starts to get a little complicated with the neutrals because obviously I'm still, not that you can see that, but I'm still wearing the white boots. And it's because I've lost that pattern that brings them all together having multiple colors on their own like that is starting to look a little bit disjointed. So again, as soon as you start to bring in a couple of elements of that neutral instead of just one, I'd maybe even go for a cream headband if I owned one. But as soon as you start bringing in multiple elements, even just seeing a peak of that, suddenly it starts to become more cohesive. Oh, and obviously don't forget that you can wear this jumper with the dress too. So the purple jumper that I did with the dress earlier, you could do exactly the same with this apricot. Okay, so what I'm doing now is getting into the realms of where people might start to get a little bit uncomfortable. So if this isn't your style, then you can just take it or leave it. But um, what I then really like to do is kind of color block. So because I've got loads of items in my wardrobe, in my capsule wardrobe, that are this bright purple color, I quite like to make an entire outfit out of those. 
And now, so I'm just going to show you what I've got going on, which is a kind of oversized look with this really bright purple jumper, which is also a dress. Again, it's under the stories because I'm so predictable, but it's, yeah, it's basically sold to you as a dress slash top. So it's like an oversized jumper dress thing. Um, and it just, I really love the way it swamps me in this. I think it doesn't necessarily make you look like you have no figure, but it also gives you that look as though you are doing something a little bit cool with it. Kind of, you know, it's not just your classic kind of short jumper that's up here, although you could definitely do that too. And I frequently do, because I have a short jumper version of this. So I do that as well with a little white belt and then white shoes. However, with this, I really, I just really love how it's just this huge swamp of purple. I don't think you lose me in it as well. I think you still very much see my face first and that I have a bit of figure definition going on underneath it. It's, yeah, I'm a big fan of this, but I understand that most people will probably find it really weird. So that's okay too. Um, I'm going to show you the purple shoes with it because we haven't done those yet. Um, and they are really quite fun. I realise I've shown you everything with these white boots and that's just because the most, most of the outfits I wear are for the office. So I kind of wear them with my Cruella de Vil boots so that I can frighten people. But if I was at home, I would not be wearing those. Um, I would almost certainly just be wearing these, which are so, so mucky, but they're from June and they're just a really simple little pump. I don't do sports trainers of any kind um, because I'm a massive snob. Purple shoes. <laughs> yeah, I'm even as I'm looking at this, I'm like, maybe this is too much purple. Let me just take my Harry Potter socks off. Oh, wow, you can tell I've not spoken to any real humans in a while. Okay, so they're lovely, but they're so uncomfortable. They're one of those shoes where you're like, if I step too hard, I will just fall out of them. Okay. Woo. I'm so, oh, I'm so bad at this. And of the stories, and of the stories, and these are Zara, but they're thrifted. So this is, a, can you see? This is a little bit of a rogue thing, I think. I don't know if that's something that cool people say anymore, probably it's not, but I would do it like this. And I'm, even as I'm looking at this, I think this is too much. This is casual. Whoa. This is a casual jumper more so than my other one. So let's have a look at it with this instead. Right. Okay, so I'm looking a little bit less mental now with these. Okay, so, so it's a little bit more formal than what I was wearing with the kind of oversized jumper, um, but it serves largely the same function. I just think once you add a pair of shoes, and again, they're all in the same color, so you have no issue with nothing going together because it's all exactly the same color, right? Like, how can you get it wrong? There's something lovely about putting a pair of stilettos with what would otherwise be quite a casual dress down outfit. Um, you sort of think I've taken this from, you know, chilling at home to going to dinner or out with friends or whatever. A restaurant probably would be best while you're sitting there. Okay, so I am back in the oversized jumper, but I am wearing it with black tights now so that you can see what it looks like as a dress. Again, <laughs> if before you were looking at me in the kind of purple chinos, oversized purple jumper, purple explosion, then you may now be looking and saying, oh, that's actually quite a nice jumper dress, but what the hell was she doing before? Um, which I would totally understand. <laughs> Somewhere in this room is a belt. I have it here. So first of all, casual. Could wear it with trainers. I, you know, have trainers here. Um, you could wear it with the white boots and the white belt if you wanted, but because I have put a second pair of black shoes, I just have that option. You don't have to include that. If you, there's only one neutral that you like, then absolutely by all means just 
include one, but I have two because I just like the variation and because I have black bags and black boots, accessories. I also have more black belts than white belts. So this is how I would kind of dress it up if I were to wear it to the office, which I have on a couple of occasions. Um, whew, it's a little bit tight around all this fabric. There you go. Black belt, black boots. If somewhere I have a black bag, why yes, I do. So this is, oh, it's so pretty. This is a um, Kurt Geiger bag. And the beauty of this is you can wear it with black, but you can wear it with any of these colors that are in it here. Just so many colors. So we have that. Um, also, its strap is not silver, but it's a kind of gunmetal gray. And for me, that means I can wear it with gold because it's sort of, it, it falls into that kind of black color category rather than silver. I think you get away with it, but um, yeah, so just another example of putting purple with neutrals. It's just a really good example of how you can take a very, very casual, almost slobby sort of jumper dress and turn it into something that you would go out in or go to work in. So it really serves a lot of purposes. I literally have barely taken this off since I bought it in December, mainly because I was ill the first week after I bought it. So I literally just like sat in this massive jumper and felt sorry for myself. I haven't talked about this top and I'm kind of, I feel like people are probably getting bored now because I'm literally just playing fun dress up with these. But you can see how, you know, top with purple trousers would also be a thing. But my attention span has run out because social media is rotting my brain. Oh, <laughs> also jeans. So this is an apology because I am wearing black tights with a white dress and it's bad. So the story is that these, my least laddered pair of tights, my nude ones are so disgustingly laddered that like they're more like lace at this point and so I, I just can't wear them. But you can get the idea. Oh God, it even hurts to look. The reason why I don't want to wear black tights with this is because it just totally kills off the colour. Like this would be quite a fresh and springy kind of look if it weren't for this. Thank God that they're sheer because if they were a block of colour it would look even worse. No. I'm sorry about the creases on this, like linen is such a pain. So I would advise if you're getting something like this that when you sit down it will crease to just not bother because it's annoying. Um, but I just wanted to show you what you could do with a little tunic dress. I wish I had this in like a cream tweed or something, but um, yeah. So basically you can use all of your kind of neutrals. Um, I wanted to show you something that was only with neutrals because I understand I've been very focused on the brights. And of course this is kind of a version of what we did with the purple, but just using the neutrals instead. It's the beauty of having, you know, three or four main colours in your wardrobe is that you can colour block with each and every one of them. Again, like if you wanted to, you've got your cream accessories. I, no, I don't. But if I had like little pearl earrings, this, it could look very preppy and very fresh. I've also done it with trainers because I realised I haven't actually worn those trainers yet at all on this video because I'm, I'm just not really a trainers person. I will wear them occasionally, but. I am much more of a high heels person. This is good because you can use it with your neutrals, but you could wear your brights with it as well. You know, you could have, I wonder, I wonder. Okay, yeah. So it's not my favorite look, but you could absolutely do the same kind of technique of, of the pretend rolled up jumper magic that I still have not mastered. But you, you've then got like a little, almost sporty looking, outfit so yeah i understand that a lot of people like these kind of short dresses in their wardrobe so i'm including this because i think it's kind of handy to have something that not only goes under stuff but also goes over the top of stuff as well it's just such a versatile garment um yeah so i think that's probably it because you're probably asleep now oh god
Also, if you were worried, that man's gone away now. So just with this jumper alone, you've got over white tunic, so that's one outfit. You've got over the top of this dress, and that's two outfits. You could wear it over the top of this dress, which is three. Um, you can wear it with these chinos, which is four. And jeans. I don't know I'm hating on jeans so much today. I do actually wear them quite a lot, but there's just no fun in talking about jeans. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope this has given you some inspo at the very least and maybe helped you create a capsule wardrobe at the absolute most. Yeah, thank you very much for putting up with my kind of slightly crazy take. I feel like I owe an apology to this dress for insulting it at the beginning and calling it flamboyant. I do actually think you could do this process with this dress. You know, you could take this green here and this bright pink and you could create your capsule wardrobe out of those instead of the purple and the orange. Because of course you've got the brown in the pattern here, you would have brown accessories, for example. So you can see how this technique would work for multiple different dresses. Even if you wanted to start and your favorite patterned item for spring is, you know, a skirt or a top, you can start from that. So nothing is too flamboyant to create a capsule wardrobe with it at the center. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.